good morning. Today is my last day in Rome. And I have a very exciting day planned. So when I took my tour at the St. Peter's Basilica, my tour guide said something that like caught my eye that I did not know about, which was that there are 13 obelisks in Rome. Eight Egyptian and five Roman. So the Egyptian ones have, were like taken from Egypt and brought to Rome. And I didn't know that. So I started doing research on where they're located and what this like historical significance is. And I learned that one, there are 21 fully standing obelisks left in the world. Ancient Egyptian obelisks left standing in the world. And Rome has the most, even more than Egypt. So Rome has eight ancient obelisks and Egypt has five left like fully standing, not like half obelisks, which I thought was really interesting. Rome is also home to the largest ancient Egyptian obelisk in the world. So today we're going to walk around Rome visiting all 13 obelisks. I've already seen probably around half of them and I took lots of videos, but I did not understand the historical significance of them. I just thought they were obelisks. I didn't like connect how many there were when I was seeing them. So you might see some ones that I've already videoed over the past few days in Rome, but today you're gonna get some facts about them because I think it's really cool. which has a very interesting story and it's currently the largest Egyptian obelisk in the world and on there a bunch of hieroglyphs dedicated to the Egyptian god Amun-Ra and all the inscriptions at the base are about its history after it left Egypt and Constantine brought it here it's moved around a lot but it's cool it's really big and the hieroglyphs are still intact which amazes me that this is like BC, BC times, and it's still standing in its original form. The second one I'm visiting today, which is technically the hardest to find because it's like tucked in the back of these gardens and is the most outside of the center Rome. It is the smallest that we're going to see today and it's been moved so much and it wasn't really taken care of so a lot of it's been rebuilt a little bit and at the, you can kind of see where it's divided on the very top it's still like the remaining stone with the hieroglyphs and then this is kind of restored and the hieroglyphs have kind of faded away so this is one of two that were in front of the temple of Ra in Heliopolis the other one is we're going to see later on today it's in a different part of Rome and that one's a little bit more intact than this one this has seen better days for sure but again it's the smallest and it's super cool I think they're all really cool but I can see why compared to the Lateran this is tiny because that one was huge The third obelisk I'm at is called the Escolino, also known as the Librarian Obelisk. It is our, the first Roman um, obelisk of the day. It actually has a twin that we're going to see later today. And this one and its twin were in front of the Mausoleum of Augustus, the biggest circular tomb in the world. But they were separated and moved to where it is now. And something else that I learned that is really interesting is that Pope Sixtus V put, like, made a decree to put obelisk near every basilica. This is a basilica of Saint Marie to decree the victory of Christianity over paganism. And on top of this obelisk is Pope Sixtus V's coat of arms, his like family uh, namesake. That's 
the Dugali obelisk. There's another Egyptian obelisk. It was moved to its current site in 1887 after the Battle of Dugali in Ethiopia. And on the side, Italian men that fought in the battle are inscribed on the side of the obelisk. This is probably the dirtiest obelisk that I've seen so far. A lot of homeless people are camped out in that area and on top of the obelisk. sister obelisk of the es Esquiline or the Liberian obelisk. Same backstory, it was in front of the mausoleum of Augustus before Pope Pius VI moved it to Pernalale Hill and it's actually right next to Pernalale Palace which is where popes used to come during the summer but now it is the location of the Italian president and he currently lives here. Again, it is a Roman obelisk. It doesn't have any hieroglyphs, so it's not Egypt. It was just built in replica of what Egyptian obelisks look like. All right, the next obelisk of the day I actually came here my first day in Rome. It stands in the Piazza Navona. It's called the Agonal Obelisk. And it's actually probably the most detailed one that I've seen so far. Um, it has a bunch of statues and carvings that represent the four rivers. Gian Lorenzo Bernini, who is a famous sculptor, designer, architecture here in Italy, who did a lot at St. Peter's Basilica as well, designed this. And again, it was actually designed for, um, for Pope, um, Pope Innocent X. And again, his coat of arms and family name is at the top of the obelisk. It's actually called a inaugural obelisk because where it is currently used to be an amphitheater called a inaugural. It's probably the most pretty that I've seen so far. obelisk of the day is called the Minerva obelisk and it's also very intriguing because the obelisk has been put on the back of an elephant and that elephant was also designed by Bernini like the fountain of the four rivers again it was erected by another pope pope alexander the seventh i believe and an interesting fact about the elephant is in Bernini's design he wanted the obelisk to just be all the way to be on the legs of the elephant, but someone who is jealous that Bernini got to design another base of an obelisk said that the legs alone wouldn't hold the obelisk, so the Pope ordered Bernini to put a block underneath. So like at the Agnalis obelisk, there's like, it looks like the obelisk is set not on the ground because the four fountains are kind of like like spread out like legs, like a tripod kind of. Here, you can't see through the elephant because there's a block underneath the legs. So I'm walking away from this one because it's super busy in the square and I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me, but this is the twin obelisk of the second one that I did, the short one. I'm already blanking on the name, but that one's intact. And another Egyptian obelisk. Like many other obelisks today, it moved around a lot, but in the 1700s, Pope Clement XI moved it on top of the fountain in front of the, the Pantheon, and on top, it's dedicated to his family again, like most popes. This one right here, called, the new name is called the Solar Obelisk, but there's a larger name. And it's called because it was designed to be a sundial and tell time as well as like seasons and calendar years. However, I can't see, it's blocked off, so I can't like take videos of when the sundial works and how the shadow plays across the ground to tell the time. 
and it's obviously miscued because of the buildings. It's not getting direct sunlight all the time, so it doesn't tell the correct kind of level. It doesn't tell the time all the time. However, this one has a very long and complicated history. Because it has such a complicated history, I'll just say one fact about it. So for the sundial to accurately work, it would need 110 meters west to east and 60 meters north to south for it to accurately be able to like tell the time. And obviously it can't do that because it's in the middle of Rome and buildings. And the second fact is, again, it was restated and restored by another pope, Pope Pius VI and his coat of arms and things is at the top there on the round thing of the sundial. So I'm walking and talking because at the, the next obelisk is at the top of the Spanish steps and there are a lot of hustlers. And to be honest, I've had roses try to be shoved into my hand as well as someone wants to build like those bracelets off your hand and then they tie it around you and then force you to paint them. So I'm just gonna walk and talk. That, although has hieroglyphics on it, is actually a Roman obelisk because it's just a carbon copy of another obelisk here that I'm actually gonna be walking to soon. It's one of the last ones on my list. And that one's the Egyptian one. Romans built this one and just copied the hieroglyphs off of the one from Egypt, and it's actually somewhere even upside down on that obelisk itself. So yeah, technically has a twin, but really that's just a copy of an Egyptian obelisk that was made for someone's private residence, but now it's at the top of the Spanish ships. Alright, obelisk number 11. On Pinaco obelisk, I believe that's what it's called. It's definitely a Roman obelisk. The stone was brought from Egypt, but they think the, hieroglyph the hieroglyphs were called, carved in Rome. So they technically call it a Rome obelisk, not an Egyptian obelisk. So this is the Flaminian, Flaminian obelisk, which the one on top of the Spanish steps was created after and like copied from. This was brought to Rome by Augustus after Mark, the death of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. And it's pretty much dedicated to, like most obelisks, obelisks from Egypt, to the god of the sun, Ra. And just some Roman history, it's called the Flaminian Obelisk because it's next to the Flaminian Gate, which is where a famous person entered Rome. I don't know. I feel like I need to just link all the the history facts. Obelisks are really cool and I think how they got, especially the Egyptian, ancient Egyptian obelisk in Rome, how they got from Egypt to Italy. This is an interesting backstory. It has to do with a lot of gods, death, and emperors, and popes. It's crazy. It's, these things have stood the test of time. They're super old, super ancient, and they're still standing. It's crazy. So the last obelisk to go to is the Vatican, but I took tons of pictures and videos of that when I, the obelisk when I was there. As I'm walking to get lunch, because it's about one o'clock, just say some facts about the Vatican. So we, like historians, don't know if the Lateran obelisk, the first one I saw, or the one that's in the Vatican is the oldest because the Vatican is the only obelisk in Rome that has been standing since Roman times, like it hasn't toppled. All the others that we've, I've seen today have been rebuilt or refurbished. Also, the Vatican obelisk doesn't have any hieroglyphs on it, but it is stated in St. Peter's, something by St. Peter that it came from Egypt, so. But one thing my dad, my guide said at the Vatican, or the St. Peter's Basilica, is that that obvious has seen a lot of assassinations, a lot of blood. It's been scrubbed a lot. I didn't take the metro at all. I walked to every obelisk except for the Vatican. Eight miles of walking today.